Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome again to our mini podcast series. This is the deal of the week. The, go ahead. No, just, you got a song for us? I was going to break into song. <laughs> um, this is Paul. Everyone knows Andrew. Oh. Uh, this is Seth. I'm wearing my Tesla shirt again. I'm a Tesla fanboy. Paul's rocking the 2016 Cavs Championship Ohio shirt. Which I have a feeling we'll be rocking for the next 30 years. Love that thing. <laughs> Uh, and Andrew's des- dressed in dad mode as always. Stylish yes. dad mode. <laughs> yes. You do pull it off better than I hey, do. Hey, thanks. Um, guys, this is where we bring you a... Uh, you Andrew clothes. brings us a deal. Again, Paul and Andrew and everyone from Learn From Us, we talk about how you need to see uh, a lot of pitches. You need to see a good mm-hmm. number of deals, and it's not about swinging at everyone. Uh, we're trying... And, and also not hit, trying to hit home runs with everyone. We want to get little bitty singles. And so we're going to look at a lot of deals and see if they're right for you. So Paul has never heard anything about this. Andrew's going to describe it, and you'll hear them, hear them talk out um, the mindset of of what this proje- uh, what this property might be worth, and is it a good deal or not. Right, Paul? Sounds great. Andrew, why don't you take it away and uh, tell us all about this product, uh, all right. this property you have today. We're one suburb west of Cleveland in Lakewood, Ohio. 19-unit building built in 1927, which is pretty typical Oof. for the area. That's old. Pretty typical, though, wouldn't you say? Yeah, of course. What comes up with old properties, Paul? Good question, Seth. Um, maintenance tends to be deferred because usually the same people have owned it for a long time. And they don't invest the capital we invest. So you got galvanized pipe, which is the way the pipes were that they end up becoming like, instead of being this much in between them, it's like literally this small in between them. Mm-hmm. Um, Electrical is bad. Pretty much everything is bad and old when the building's built in 1927 they weren't planning on everyone having ipads and tvs yeah. and I even see. the refrigerators e- microwaves HVAC everything is pretty rare in those things you have a boiler system good call paul it is rare is it here no oh, okay. it's a boiler <laughs> i forgot to mention we're in the we're, again guys we're coming to you from mexico totally changing the subject like i always love to do <laughs> that's why we're dressed like we're going to a volleyball match <laughs> but um remember pulp fiction the clothes they bring no i, I only was <laughs> Well, for the rest, for the ninety-seven percent of you out there who have seen, I've movie, seen Pulp Fiction. It's just yeah, has been you know, like twenty years. It's like when they dress up to go and they have these clothes on. So anyway, we're showing a lot of leg as usual. Andrew, tell us more about this nineteen twenty-nine building. All right, Twenty-seven. Nin- right. You got nineteen units. Uh huh. Sixteen one bedrooms. Oh, not good, right? You love uh, you love uh, two bedrooms. Right? Now I will say this: in a in market like Lakewood, I'm I think you can get away with it a little bit more. So when you say market like Lakewood, explain it. Younger, a lot of the, a lot of the young kids out of college. Hey, Rockman, do you want to go past? He's just in the he's behind you in the in the footage, just like a like. Yeah, you're in the footage, FYI. He's just like. <laughs> <laughs> Keep What's going, Rockman. Keep going, man. Um, so in Lakewood, there's a lot of um the young professionals who just graduated from college, and who maybe are in law school or something like that will want to be close to downtown. This is a great market to be in from downtown. The problem is terrible parking. So when you tell me there's three parking spots out of 19 units, I'm going to be shocked on the high side. All right, it's zero. <laughs> zero, okay. also all street parking. All street there's parking. There's no parking at all. And then you need city permits for the street? I don't think you need city no. permits. You just need to find a Good luck spot. finding it, though. Yeah, so that's already a really big detriment to the building. I mean, you're already making get lower rents just because of that. Good Lord, this is not starting off great. <laughs> okay, keep going. Good pick, Andrew. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, next. Hey, the building's just fine. Me. Let me let me guess something. Sixteen one bedrooms and three efficiencies. Sixteen ones, three twos. Oh, look at that. That's exciting. All right, go ahead. So we'll fast forward. Obviously, um, I say obviously because I think Paul's guessing it, but flat roof. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, boiler. It, boiler. It is an older roof. Again, like Paul said, it's been with the same owner for a little bit, and they're patching, and it probably needs a lot of work. Same thing with some of the interiors, the units, hallways, everything. Okay. So we'll go, th- we'll go this route. We'll skip ahead. I'll tell you what the actual rents are right now. Okay, what are the one bedrooms at? 481. <laughs> What's so funny? It includes the heat in there, too. $481 a month for where, rent. Where can you get? Like, is this really Lakewood or is this like the Cleveland side of uh, My cell of, phone bill is 200 Exactly my point. And that includes the heat. It's Lakewood. What Lakewood, does that mean? Lakewood. What does that mean? What do you mean? What does what mean? Well, tell the if I'm if I'm watching this uh, ten states away, what does its Lakewood mean? That rent is really low for Lakewood. Correct. Well, Lakewood's like an up. If you put some good quality product up there, you can have a lot. Of, but the fact that you even have four hundred eighty-one dollars per month in rent, 
it, well, it starts showing you the quality of the units as well and the type of uh, yeah, people you're going to get. Yeah, you're going to get the worst possible tenant imaginable. 481. What's the highest one bedroom? Do you know that? From a dollar standpoint? Yeah. No, I just did a blended number. Okay. What about the two bedrooms? 620. I'm not even going to do this. I'm not even going to work about the current numbers because it's not even worth it. This current numbers, I bet you the expenses don't even cover. You, you, Agreed. It's, it, it's a waste of time. So we're gonna do, what we're going to do here is we immediately go to what's it worth after rehab? Because what it's worth today is... Zero. I mean, not zero, but it's like... From a financial status, if you were trying to sit there and... It's petty. It's small. It's, it's negligible. We're not even going to like... The income, I don't even know if it would you cover can't, the expenses. You can't... I cannot buy this property for any amount of money and just run it as is, basically, right. unless it was like $10. I'm, I'm, I'm being facetious, but the whole point is, unless you're going to own or operate this property by yourself forever, you can't buy it as a... It's just... Yeah. And pay cash because the bank's not giving you a loan because there's no money. All right. Are you saying that the cost of rehabbing a one-bedroom... We haven't be talked about rehabbing yet. Oh. What so I'm sitting there saying is if I bought this right now as is and said I'm not going to rehab it, I'm just going to keep all the rents the same. Sure. The expenses for me to operate that property would probably be around five to fifty-five thousand, fifty-five hundred dollars per unit, and the total rent is fifty-five hundred dollars per unit per year. So I would basically be. What goes into those expenses again? Taxes, maintenance, advertising, utilities, oh, insurance, everything. Everything. Okay. everything. Management fee. Okay. Yeah, I can see. Okay, keep, go okay. keep going, Andrew. So what do you? F so I'm going to say for a one bedroom in Lakewood, how many? How big are these one bedrooms? You know? No, I don't. Hmm. God, no parking. That's a tough one. It's it's tough. No how parking's you, a real downside. How do you get like a, a downtown executive or a lawyer or something like that to come rent from you when you have no parking? Right. They're gonna they're gonna own a car. Most people own a car there. And it's not like the the, the transit system in Cleveland's like the only plus side is they're used to it. If you want to live in Lakewood, you know ninety percent <sighs> of buildings don't have parking. Hmm. Oh boy. So one bedroom. What do we get in Shaker for a good one bedroom? Nine fifty. But we had some parking. Correct. Hmm. I feel like Lakewood's trendier than that. What do we get in the south side of the Shaker Square for a one-bedroom? I'd say... Not, not Drexmore and Ludlow, because those were no, no, beautiful no, units. 850? I was going to say 840. Okay. So talk out your calculations, Paul. So I'm going to sit here and go, the parking is the real kicker here. Like, it's the real kick in the nuts. I mean, I look at going... Bad, bad, huh? Yeah, I mean, Seth, would you rent a one-bedroom to, 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 to struggle, and you have to drive your car every day to work, and you have to struggle to find a spot every day coming home? It could be blocks away. Well, yeah. this is on a main street, so right now you've got tenants who, if you're paying 450 a month, in your head you're thinking, what type of tenant is paying 450 a month to live? It may be someone without a car. They're, they're using the bus line. But if you do go get someone who's going to be paying you 850 et cetera, they're oh, probably going to own a car, and the guy down the street who's the exact same rent, maybe a little more, who's got parking, which one are you going to take? Mm -hmm. You need a spot to put the car. Yeah, I guess that is kind of tough. If, I see. If you want to upgrade this to try and get more out of it, you're going to have the, the parkings. Hmm, I never thought that was so much of a killer. Yeah, it sucks. Hmm. Paul, uh, they did give me some expenses. Okay, let's hear it. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> so this is something that we've talked about on other podcasts and stuff, is getting information, whether it's the broker or the owner. Obviously, their goal was to give you as little expense as possible and probably trim it and even outright lie. Mm -hmm. You threw some numbers out before. What did you throw out from a per unit standpoint? For what? Operations? 5500 5, Correct. Because the taxes in Lakewood are very high. 4.4. Right now, it's... Uh, valued at four hundred seventy-six thousand with twenty-one thousand in taxes. So, so that's what I'm saying. It's not four point four percent, Andrew. What is it? Is it higher? Do the math. And you're probably right. Okay, continue on. You're right. All right. So we've got Two, we've got gas, electric, phone, advertise. taxes, trash, water, What's sewer. What's the total? Forty-two thousand nine hundred. For for nineteen units. Twenty-two fifty a door. <laughs> There's no management fee in there. There's no reserves in there. Even the By the way, what are reserves? Are reserves are putting money in for capital improvements. Every year you're going to put in six to $9,000 a year just to do bigger things in the property that don't generate any income. But you have to underwrite it because buildings break. And the bigger things will break eventually. Putting a new roof on every five years might be needed. So you need to account for that in your underwriting. Mm. Well, and it's not just us beating deals up either. A bank's going to make you put them a in. Bank's gonna, a good bank's going to make you do that anyhow. 
three hundred dollars per unit, whatever it is. So anyhow, that's garbage. There's Correct. no way. Correct. It's garbage. Numbers are terrible. So again, this gets into when we look at a deal like this, we're saying, what do we think we can get rents to, and what do we think the expenses actually? What is their will gas be? bill? What do they have their gas bill at? Ten thousand. On the nose. Yes. For nineteen units. Five hundred dollars a unit. That no. And by the way, to say on the nose ten thousand, that means the made up number. Mm. So what we do in due diligence is if we want to buy buy into that bullshit number, we sit there and say, okay, what's your account number? Get us all the bills for the last two years. And I can one hundred percent guarantee you that number is higher than ten thousand. Mm. In Shaker. And by the way, if it is ten thousand, that means these units got to be three hundred fifty square feet. Yeah, that's the other thing. Exactly. You know, in Shaker, we paid the gas bill and we averaged. What were we at the end of the? Well, I mean, gas prices stayed low for a long time, but we were still in the thousand dollars per unit range. Yeah, I mean, they peaked. Oh, probably what was it? Two thousand ten? No, eight, nine. We were yeah. we were spending. I mean, it was it was hurt. It hurt. Yeah. But but then afterwards, when it fell, we were at like you know a thousand dollars a unit. Still, we were still spending three hundred thousand dollars yeah, a year. Yeah, you call it nine hundred. Yeah, it's still nine hundred. This is five hundred dollars a unit. No, advertising. Oh, they don't advertise. Oh, and parking. The parking is the killer. <laughs> You're not gonna get a good tenant who doesn't want parking. Is there a price? Of course. Is there a price this could be at for sale? That still makes it of course. a good deal. And that's the question that we always, that's why I'm not the guy who's going to sit there and say, no, I'm going to sit there and say, listen, I just got to factor that in there and adjust for it. That's it. Mm-hmm. So when Paul was throwing out numbers before saying, oh, I think we get maybe 850 for the ones and 950 for the twos. And I'm throwing numbers in his mouth there. He may back those down a little bit because you're not going to get as much. You're not going to stay full trying to maximize the rent with no parking. You know, I don't like these anymore. You know why? <laughs> I feel like we're just Debbie Downers, but looking at this going, this is a complete lie and sham. Like, I don't look at this saying, you know, it's funny. I'm not going to bring up names exactly, but we sold a property, quote unquote, to a guy who might be legal action here soon. And he was bragging about all the deals he's done, but yet he couldn't do his own deal as well. And that's exactly what I'm sitting there saying. It's like everybody talks about these great deals, but then when they're involved in deals, all of a sudden these deals go away. This is an exact example of somebody saying, no, I operate this property like this. It's happened to me. On my very first deal, bullshit numbers like this, I buy it, and the numbers skyrocket. And they go, oh, well, this is our estimation of what it could do. So even when I contacted the, the broker mm-hmm. for this to talk to her, yeah. she, she got back to me two days later in a voicemail and, and said something in effect of like, oh, man, I just, I've had 100 phone calls about this property. <laughs> she goes, I'm going to tell you what the price is, and I'm going to tell you it's firm. It does not move at all. Good. What does 100 calls tell you? If that's real, which I, I don't I think that's real. I doubt it's real. It's, let me guess. <laughs> the, London, the buyer was in London? No. <laughs> that's how I think about that call. Wow. And they're dealing with, and they're probably dealing with a lot of amateurs at 19 units, and that's the kind of thing that would work on them. Well, and that's what we're trying to do is help people through that amateur game. Look, it's on the market. Someone's going to end up buying this. Someone's going to pay for it. Yeah. I don't know what number, but someone's going to buy it. Let's get to the number, Paul. Start crunching. I already did. What do you got, baby? So I'm going to say that the thing that holds me back is the parking. I lowered my rent numbers based on parking. What would you put as one bedroom? 815. Oh, I actually did lower than that. I did 815 and 915. I did 795, 895. Okay. We're, wow. not, we're not crazy far off. Yeah, we're not crazy far off. You think you can take these 425, 475 rooms? Yeah, I'm not worried about See, I'm not worried about the 481 rent. What I'm worried about is what does Lakewood get and how bad is it? But how much do you assume for rehab costs? 20,000 a door. Ooh. See, I was thinking to myself, we do a lot lower rehab because we're not going to be able to get a top quality tenant without parking. Yeah. I, I, you know, to get that big rent and remember it, it's not just inside the unit. You're going to have some exterior stuff that's going you. in that number as well. So it's not, just I did 15. Okay. And the reason being is I don't think we're going to do as much because we're not going to be able to get the Seth, Paul and Andrews of the world to go live there. I hear you. Even a standard Rehab, like just to go in and you're not doing anything in the hallways. What are you spending there? 12, 12 and a half? Yeah. So how much money do you have for the outside stuff, for the roof? Yeah, I know. I, I still did $50,000 for exterior stuff. Okay. <sighs> See, this is one of the things I don't like. Cause now I'm starting to feel like yeah. I got my price. I have a range. Dramatic pause. 
you know why I, I almost don't want to say because I'm just like there's no way it's gonna be selling for this price because you feel like you're you're lowballing and then yeah I, I feel like people perceive it as lowballing but to me I'm like it's just the numbers this is what it works out to well I think that's what we're trying to do here is we walk three twenty five or three seventy five total okay what'd you come up with for yourself I don't know if you can see that three eighty three eighty and again I had a little higher rents than you you did more rehab than me what'd you underwrite the cap rate at Seven. So did I. Yeah. So what does 380 mean, Andrew? Paul was Paul was throwing in mid threes, and I was but a I also little had, higher. And I also had, assuming we had to like vacate it and all that stuff. So I, I'll say my price was 350. So that's, we're we're in the neighborhood of each wanna, other. That's what you want to get in on this, to Yeah, to make it worthwhile. And I really hate the parking stuff. Hmm. Like when I say I hate the parking, I hate the parking. What's it listed for? Drum roll, please. I I want to guess. Yeah. Are you gonna get it right again? You didn't see it when I showed you my book, did you? No, I did not. Nice okay. Seven hundred sixty thousand dollars. Five twenty-five. Oh. Twenty-seven thousand a door. Twenty-seven six. I'm actually surprised by that. Explain. You know, that market's a very high demand market. I mean, a lot of people want to be in Lakewood. I'm actually surprised it's that low. I, and I think sub thirty a door. I thought forty a door for sure. I think part of it is it needs work. It has such low rents. Wow, I'm actually kind of impressed. What could look, a, do you look, see like the the whole reaction like the look mood at like go now. <laughs> yeah. What kind of buyer? Or what stage? An idiot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what stage would someone be at to go after this type of property? Oh, I think once you have a few units on your belt and you're ready for the next level, this would be a, this kind of property and this kind of size would be a great. Like you have four or five units on your belt and you're ready to take the next step. Boom, jump to 19. What yes. would you put down and what would you mortgage on this? Well, you do the rehab. Oh, yeah. So let's assume your all in cost with rehab and everything is 600. No, 750. Yeah, because you're going to. Yeah, it's called 700. Right. Then I would, I, would, I would recommend somebody put 25% down and mm. finance the rest. I think you'd be fine with the rehab cost in there, too. And that's, that's two. One is an acquisition loan, the other is some sort of a bridge or construction loan yeah, to go do the rest. Yeah. yeah, I think it's great. I'm actually surprised by that. 525. I was actually going lower on the 760. I was like, I'm going to shit myself if it's $950,000. That's what I thought. I mean, I really, at first I was like, if this starts with a one with six digits after it, I'm, I'm going to freaking drop this microphone. <laughs> so 525, huh? Yeah, yep. I was actually surprised by that. So I think if the market settles a little bit, that person will start becoming a little more realistic and that number might be able to come down. And by the way, and there's the a... Parking th is the big thing, stuff. So there's mm -hmm. another option, Paul. The other option is... I'm not in New York City. No one buys it. And then over the next couple of years, they just realize, wait a second, I can go get 600 in rent. And then all of a sudden, maybe they get someone to come in and pay because now it could actually sit there and so finance as it is. That's a great point that Andrew makes. We're the kind of guys who go, we don't care what your, what your rents are right now. We couldn't care less. You sit there and worried about, well, how do you get 41 and 7? I mm. couldn't care less what their rents are right now. What matters to me is what can I get the rents to? And that's what matters to us. So on one token, we are, are considered like low ball value guys. The next token though, I couldn't care less. I once I once bought a building from somebody twice. Wood, um, yep. From David King on South Woodland. Yep. I paid him more than he was asking the year before with a broker that he couldn't get because I knew the potential of the property. I paid three twenty. He was asking three hundred. Couldn't even get three hundred on the market with the biggest broker in town. Hmm. I paid more than he was asking. So why did you do that? Because I knew the value. Then it, we ended up selling it for essentially the price of. Nine nine fifty or a million bucks hmm. because we put three or four hundred thousand dollars into it. And David and I became great friends. And he said, "Yeah, I wasn't going to do that. Well, now, we didn't put three fifty into it. We didn't put three fifty no, into it. It was less." Yeah. Now, now Andrew's asking the intriguing questions and taking my job. Did you see that last one? He's like, "Tell me why, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing good. I'm just picking it up like a sponge Look over here." <laughs> well, um, remember when we did Ramage and you guys were just sitting there talking? I'm like, and finally Seth goes, "Why do we have Paul here?" <laughs> I feel that way a bit. <laughs> just like do well, the numbers, Seth. I did actually. That's I came up with something. By similar. the way, we're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I said we do deal of the week, but you start the numbers. <laughs> well, let me crunch here. <laughs> okay, we did two. Um, okay. The parking though is the is the. Uh, that's the tough one for me because you're not gonna. I mean, what what streets it on? Lake. A, a major street. I'm not getting too detailed, but. Oh, that's but right. yeah, it's, that. it's a major street. Mm. 
I, I just have a hard time believing we're going to get. So this number is still too high for you guys to be super interested in this? Remember, well, the market is what it is right now. Every deal in this market is essentially on the market. Every deal in the market is essentially too much for us because the market's inflated. Yeah. And this has been sitting around for You have too many amateurs over going over three deals. Has the price changed over the year, I assume? I just Nope. Listen, I'm not going to name names again, but remember the story I gave yesterday. Somebody we know went from working in showbiz to building multi-million dollar homes. Literally, boop. Oh, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be in TV anymore. I'm going to go build multi-million dollar homes. And I remember thinking to myself like how what was the what made that happen? And to me, it's the sign that real estate is too frothy. Mm-hmm. They built. Frothy. They built frothy. I love it's frothy. a good word, isn't yeah. it? They built. They built. By the way, their homes are beautiful. But I look at going. I don't know if they understand the downside risk of ten percent margin on that kind of home or whatever the number is, being not enough in a in any sort of market. So they're going for what two million bucks? Listen, a friend of mine owns owns a home somewhat similar to that, and he mm-hmm. paid a million eight sixty. Okay, so what Paul's alluding to is if you go do one home and it starts going well. That person, not that person, everyone's kind of inclined like, okay, maybe I'll do two this time. Maybe mm-hmm. I'll do three. And they think, this is how I do it. And not keeping the fact that they keep borrowing and borrowing and they're extending their self and they get all these obligations. And if they're doing it with 10%, because like, oh, it'll Even sell. Even 15% margin. It'll sell. Guess what? The market, when it drops, it's going to drop more than 15. And now they have all this debt and no way to pay it back. By the way, it's not even the market dropping. Any sort of disconnect in the any sort of screw up in the process of it and you have 10 or 15% margin, where does it go? The hardest part about investing is understanding your downside risk and every effing asshole out there will sit there and use that cliche, but understanding your downside risk. But what does that mean? It means when we bought Ramage and we thought we were going to make it for 43 and all of a sudden we had to do the freaking waterproofing and it cost us 10,000 more, guess what? We were still into it for a good enough number that made it a killer deal. Mm-hmm. When somebody else would have paid 25 or 30, and then all of a sudden they're into it for exactly what it's worth. They did all that work for what? Break even? No, thank you. Yeah. And that's the issue that we always talk about. When we talk about the margin of safety that value investors talk about, Ben Graham and Warren Buffett, w- just because you make money today doesn't mean you're always going to make money. Look at these hedge funds who all borrow 25, 30 times their asset <coughs> values. And then they all of a sudden have a, a hiccup in the market, and that all of a sudden buries them. It worked for years and years and years and years. Oh, 2000 to 2006. 94 to 2000 for tech stocks. It always worked. You don't need revenue. You don't need profit. All of a sudden, one day you do, and everyone goes under. Well, go to 2007. How many home builders came out of nowhere? Oh, yeah. Everybody and their mother. I remember going to grad school, and this guy in the grad school, this kid, I was like, what do you do? He's like, I do real estate. I'm like, where? He goes, all over the country. I said, all over the country? He goes, yeah, I'm going to Florida this weekend to buy a couple. I don't see him anywhere anymore. A good bear market or bad market will wipe out all the hacks. And unfortunately, this, pro- this project is being geared towards the hack, right? Yep. That's essentially it. Hmm. And again, we're very conservative, but our goal for everybody that learned from us is to get them to find one, one great deal, deal a year. I can't keep, I can't keep, uh, I keep saying that in my mind. It's not like this like, mind-boggling thing. It's like you, get, you look at a bunch of deals, we bring them to you guys, we talk about it, we do our homework, find that one good deal. You do one good deal a year, get 30 or 40, it transitions into how many millions on the back end? $11 million potentially. And, and Investing $25,000 a year. Yeah. Even going back, Paul. You, when, by the way, I'm going to say, I, think that's, that's, I actually think that's conservative, 25000 But anyways, go ahead. When you sit there and say, hey, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be conservative in doing this, right? We, Ooh. You, you said we're conservative, uh, right? Yeah. So if we're being conservative... I, I guess I would argue with that a little bit, just the way you underwrote that last deal. I understand the idea of being conservative, but we're also sitting you're there right. and saying- You're right. I'm apologizing for- You're right. You're right. We're, I, we're, we're being realistic. More. We're being realistic. Yeah, yeah, we're paying more because we know it's worth more. We're not paying what it is right now. Yeah, Otherwise, you're right. we would have been paying 50 grand you're for right. the building. Yeah, you know, I'm being apologetic because the market doesn't, doesn't show that we're right right now. Correct. Right now. Yeah. But when the market goes- in the market, Again, I'm going to call 08 and 09. I'm not saying oh, nothing is going to happen again. We don't even need it to happen. But when that happened, and we were buying everything under the sun, I mean, was any deal even? <laughs> it was incredible stuff. Hmm. It was drinking from a fire hydrant. Yes, it was like how much water can we get in our mouths? Oh my gosh! 
It was awesome. And I don't think that's going to happen again, but all it takes is just, but when I see these things on Facebook with somebody's all of a sudden building multi-million dollar homes and I'm like, where's the, like, look at us. We have all the experience in the world and we're talking about building a $250,000 spec and a tiny home. And that's how we're, de we have all the experience and we can go forward to go build a $2 million home and see if it works so we can make two or 300,000 bucks. And we don't do it. Why? Because I'm like, that doesn't seem like a good risk reward prospect. Granted, if you have not a lot of assets, maybe it's worth it to go take the risk when all the money's easy. But is that right? I like to sit there and say, I'm like, I know I might be conservative in that sense. We're building a $250,000 spec home and a $80,000 tiny home. And that's our dabble into, into development. Everybody else is sitting there saying, oh, let's go do a $2 million home. Like, and by the way, God. that $2 million home, they make, let's say they make 200000 off that, right? That's nothing to me. And they go do five of them. Uh, and be, all of a sudden, they feel like they're on top of the world doing all this kind of stuff. But the problem is five turns to 10, and that 200 turns to zero. Potentially. Hmm. Listen, we're, all we're sitting there saying is, whenever we talk about our investing idea, is things can work out. But like poker, like chess, just because you do something and it works doesn't mean it's always going to work. Yeah. Just because you have pocket sevens and you go against pocket, just because you have two seven, you go against pocket aces, you will win 20, 15% of the time. Maybe we should save the poker analogies for me. Oh. oh. <laughs> Andrew has won the last four <laughs> times we sat at a table. And by the way, I literally wanted to punch you yesterday. <laughs> I literally want to take the chair and throw it at you because you got every effing hand under the sun. Thank you guys for this wonderful information this <laughs> evening. It was a win. Uh, well, I'm not one. saying, hey, listen, four in a row is four in a row. It's not that we're still talking about poker here. That was great property. It was interesting <laughs> to talk about. <laughs> we will be hitting you up with more of these rad deal of the weeks. I love hearing the real stuff. And I think for some of our beginners out there like myself, it's interesting to hear you guys with the banter. And I just got to keep filling my head with it until I understand it. So I think we should talk about your flip that you did earlier this year at some point. Hmm. Okay. For the next episode. It's <laughs> a great treat, teaser. Well, it was a great teaser. Thanks, guys, for all the awesomeness. Stick with us. Watch us on YouTube. Learn from us, Investor Academy. Follow the podcast, of course. You can Spotify, find Spotify, iTunes. There. Thank you, Paul. Just rattle off where they're at because I never. Actually, I think it's only in Spotify. I, I, there's more places, but Spotify, SoundCloud. iTunes, SoundCloud, Go Go Google Play. Yeah. What else? Where's We're out there. Where's Tim when we need him? He's in Ohio. Okay. No, thanks, guys. You guys are awesome. Thanks, t thanks, Seth. We'll hit you up another with another deal of the week very soon, guys. Thanks. See you. Peace. Thanks. <laughs>